లార్డ్ బుద్ధ రామాయణి సునామి సొలుస్మస్తాన ఫోర్ వర్డ్స్ బట్ దే ఆర్ ఆల్ ఇంటెలిక్ట్ హియర్ అట్ ద కెలనియ రాజమహా విహార టుడే వీఆర్ ఇన్ కెలనియ జస్ట్ టెన్ కిలోమీటర్స్ అవే ఫ్రమ్ కెలాంబో అ థర్డ్ మినీ డ్రైవ్ అండ్ దిస్ ఈజ్ అ ప్లేస్ దట్ యూ క్యాన్ విజిట్ వెన్ ఎవర్ యూ ఆర్ ఇన్ కెలాంబో లెట్స్ ఎక్స్ప్లోర్ ద కెలనియ రాజమహా విహార when you talk about sri lanka something that always amazes me personally is its rich history sri lanka has documented history for more than 2000 years and in fact the stories the culture the buddhism of this small island plays a major role of making sri lanka's identity here at the kalani rajamaha viharaya one of the main incidents is the lord buddha's visit the first visit of lord buddha to sri lanka was to mahayangara the second visit was to nagadipa to settle a dispute among two brothers called chulodara and mahodara over there there was this uncle of them called maniyakika so the naga king maniyakika invited lord buddha to visit him in kalaniya uh, on the 8th year of lord buddha's enlightenment on a vesak day that's relatively uh, said that it's the month of may in uh, the modern day calendar lord buddha together with 500 arahants visited kalaniya so when he visited kalaniya the king was so happy and so amazed by this wonderful um, event happening so he prepared this big sermon for all his people the people of king maniyakika so he is a naga king it said and we will be visiting his place of worship also because this location of the kalaniya rajamaha vihara has some uh, amazing history and some cultural developments also so when he when uh, the lord buddha came to kalaniya he did a sermon and to celebrate this event the naga king maniyakika made a seat with gems on it a gem studded seat so the place where the lord buddha did the sermon for the people the gem studded seat later on the naga king made it a place of worship so for that place he made a chaitya and that chaitya the place where lord buddha sat the place where lord buddha did his sermon is the exact location of what we can see as the chaitya of kalaniya rajamaha vihara so i told you that a naga king invited lord buddha to kalaniya so that naga king is been worshiped by the buddhists or the pilgrims who come to this holy site and uh, this naga king the king called naga king maniyakika this is his shrine over here and he's been worshiped daily by everybody who comes to the temple and this inscription this tablet mentions in singhala and also pali that because of the invitation of lord buddha because lord buddha came to kalaniya because of lord buddha's sermon that this whole area got washed away with the sins and it's a holy site and because of that good deed of inviting lord buddha the naga king also should live in prosperity even after his death i mean the naga king literally lived somewhere around 528 bc but his legend the good deed of inviting lord buddha having the sermon for the people still lives on so let's have a look inside the naga king's shrine you can uh, notice that uh, everybody who visits a temple ah uh, barefoot they should remove footwear to go to a temple because it's a tradition it's a custom it's a way of showing respect to this holy place it's the same for all the buddhist temples throughout the country 
it's something that you can practice. I mean, when you are in Sri Lanka, it's something that you are expected to do, irrespective of your beliefs. So this is the Naga King's shrine. You can see the cobras, the serpents uh, put on the murals as a sign of him being a Naga King. So this is the Naga King's shrine. You can go inside. So as you can see, people actually worship the Naga King also. This is the Naga King's statue, the Naga King Maniakika. Over here you can see that people offer flowers, they offer milk as a sign of respect and it's something that we can see later in the video because many people who come to a temple they actually um, bathe the bow tree with milk as a sign of respect in Sri Lanka it's something to do with the traditional Buddhism so this is the shrine of the Naga King Maniakika and let's go to the other places at the beginning of the video I told you that Kalania is also referenced uh, to tsunami I know that tsunami came to Sri Lanka in 2004 but another tsunami or a referral something like a tsunami has happened more than 2000 years ago so unofficially i can say that that could have been the first tsunami to sri lanka so during the reign of king kalanithisa um, he punished a buddhist monk by boiling him in a tub of oil you know boiling him to death that was a punishment of the old age of sri lanka i guess so in that time because the gods were so angry of this king it said that the gods pushed the sea inland and that the entire city the entire kingdom of this king kalanithis was full of water it was like a literal tsunami so as to please the gods as a way of saying sorry to the gods for the mistake that he did King Karanithis was, uh, he was like told to offer his daughter, Princess Vihara Mahadevi, to the seas. So what the king did was, he made a boat, a ship, and he sacrificed. He put her on board with her maids and servants. Of course, she was a princess after all. So they pushed her to the sea, and that noble act says that it stopped the tsunami and everything went back to normal the water the floods and everything ended so because of the bravery of the princess who said okay i'm going to the sea to save the people the princess who later became the mother of king dutukamunu uh, one of the famous kings of sri lanka who united the three kingdoms ruhunu mahaya piti that's in another video i assume so the princess is also worshipped for her bravery. I mean, she's worshipped and she's respected well in Kalania because of her bravery. And this is another place where you can see that uh, the Queen Viharamha Devi is being worshipped and this statue shows her. So this is the statue of Queen Viharamha Devi. And over here in a small inscription, they have said, Tautisave Vedasitna Vihar Mahadevi Divyanganava. It says that the next Lord Buddha, the Maitri Lord Buddha, should have Queen Vihar Mahadevi as his mother. So it's a wish for the gods, I assume, to make uh, Queen Vihar Mahadevi the mother of the next Lord Buddha, uh, the Maitri Lord Buddha. Let's take a look at some other places that you can see inside the Karaniya Raja Mahavihara and over to the next place. Sri Lanka being a Buddhist country has so much of customs, traditions and even tales. And one of those sayings is that Upandasita Karapu Pauneta Varak Vendut Kalani. That literally translates to that whatever the sins you have done since birth are all forgiven once you worship the Kalania Vihara. So this is why and this is a place where people come to absolve of their sins, to pay respects 
to Lord Buddha because a place like this where it's believed that Lord Buddha himself visited, did a sermon and that gem studded seat is inside this Chaitya is a place that people really want to come and live that moment because people who come to Kalania still feel the presence, the magical power and you could have seen that in the video where people literally hundreds of people sit all around this Chaitya they tell their sad stories, they offer their prayers, they give their um, happy moments, they share everything just imagining, just picturing that they are in amidst Lord Buddha and his presence. Next, I want to take you to a place uh, which also falls into the second theory that I had for Kalaniya. That's Ramayana. Even though it's still a mythology, but very famously observed and you know believed in Sri Lanka. After the Rama's battle, it's said that Rama's brother Lakshman he gave the kingship and made King Ravana's brother Vibhishana the king of Lanka. So it's said that the king Vibhishana was coronated here in this ground. That's why inside the Kalaniya Rajamaha Vihare there is a separate shrine dedicated to Lord Vibhishana. Even though, I mean, it said that Lord Vibhishana later became a guardian of the country and now he is venerated as a god. Uh, let's visit the shrine of God Vibhishana. Uh... Now that was a proper sermon, a puja done at the Vibhishana Devalaya. So we saw that a couple, some Asanka and somebody, his beloved wife came here to say that their wish was successful. That another mother came, her actually, she came and said that the son, uh, she wished that her son would get a job and also a wife that she, he would marry and that both her intentions were accomplished like they, they completed they, she got what she needed because of her um, wish that she made to uh, Lord Vibhishana so the Kapu Mahathya the priest of this small Devalaya he said that there are so many people who come to the Vibhishana Devalaya to ask for um, blessings to have kids whenever you know some couples they might have some um, issues having children and for that and also asking for justice because God Vibhishana is somebody who is portrayed for his justice, his actions for humanity and it's uh, the Kapumata himself said that Lord Vibhishana said to his brother God Ravana that he should stop the killing and also go I mean release Sita that's something related to the Ramayana so this is what Lord Vibhishana is um, portrayed for behind me is the Devala complex of the Kalani Rajamaha Viharya inside it is the worshipping chamber for God Vibhishana the brother of um, King Ravana. Inside the priests do the blessings from morning and from about 7 in the morning until about 10, 
in the morning and then again from 4 p.m. until late night people come here for different blessings people come here to make their wishes and once the wishes actually come true they come again to say thank you so this is one of the fantastic places uh, that you can see in many of the temples and of course the Hindu Devalas it's a place where people smash coconuts when they want to ask for a blessing they smash a coconut when they want to wish someone ill which is a bit contradictory to the religions but when they want to wish somebody ill we call it in uh, we call it in single as polgahanava they even smash the coconut saying the ill wish and also when they want something good they still uh, smash some coconuts in here inside the kalani rajamaha vihare is another place of interest a place where there is a statue and this statue is a bit different to the other statues we see for lord buddha when siddharth gautama was trying to attain enlightenment he went into the forest he left his palace and everything you can find out the story but when he went to the forest he wanted to try out enlightenment through suffering he let every torture known to man come to him he thought that that is how he can attain enlightenment so this has been made into a statue and it's inside the kalani raja mahavihare so in this statue you can see how he was and it shows the t level of torture the level of pain he endured to try to attain enlightenment let's have a look <laughs> Now this is the climax of the Kalani Raja Mahavihara, a place where people come to worship the relics of Lord Buddha. Here it's said inside this tomb that the Lord Buddha's remnant, some relics, maybe hair, strands of hair, are kept inside that golden casket. This is a place where people come to worship Lord Buddha and a place which is venerated by the king Maniakita himself. What you witnessed just now is the morning Tevava. So Tevava is a practice where the people bring their offertory daily to um, the relic house. Uh, they offer their worship, their gifts, their blessings. I mean, they want to take the blessings of the relic and that's how they do it with a small uh, procession, like small perhara with the drums and the horns. So these are the drummers who actually did that uh, music that you heard so this happens uh, daily like uh, twice daily the morning one and also in the evening so we just witnessed the morning tevava here at the kalani raja mahavihara behind me is the sacred bow tree of the kalani raja mahavihara so when it comes to uh, the bow trees of course the sri mahabodhi nandradapur is one of the famous ones in the country but as you can see, I mean, every temple in the country usually has a bow tree and this one is also uh, being honoured and worshipped by the thousands of people who actually come to visit the Kalani Raja Mahavihara. And over here is the uh, 
a place where people come to see the beautiful art, uh, beautiful murals and also the beautiful statues inside the Kalaniya Raja Mahavihara. This is, I mean, very like grand looking and it has so many architectural beauties and all these murals and everything but it was uh, very recently built I mean not uh, long ago more than like 100 uh, years or so however inside you can see the beautiful paintings the murals the work of uh, the Sri Lankan artist Solius Mendes and um, his reclining Buddha statue the paintings and uh, everyone who comes to the Karani Raja Mahavihara makes this a stop to go inside and to uh, be amazed at the paintings and the murals. You can see here that these paintings are with the artistic styles of the Candian era and also are beautifully done and just like the Sistine Chapel, the paintings are there on the roof. It's a beautiful place where yeah, people can come and see. And over here, you can see the famous reclining Buddha statue inside the Kalaniya Raja Mahavihara, one of the largest in the country and one of the most celebrated and worshipped. You can see how much of people like they bring in flowers, they worship this reclining Buddha statue of Lord Buddha. And you can walk through, I mean, it's a beautiful place, a quiet place, so even I should quiet down. And whenever you visit the Kalani Raja Mahavihara, make it a visit, make it a stop, and you are going to be so amazed with the type of creativity, the type of art, and the beautiful wall paintings here inside. These art show different events that occurred with the Buddhism of Sri Lanka. Here it shows how Tissa, uh, the King Tissa accepted Buddhism and of course over there behind this relic it shows Lord Buddha giving out a sermon probably at Kalaniya, the relic and over here it shows Lord Buddha's visit to the Nagadipa temple, the second visit to Sri Lanka and this other art, it shows different kings of different eras coming to visit Kalania. And over here you can see how the Portuguese tried to attack Kalania. They tried to conquer, of, the, of course, Sri Lanka, but how they attacked, these are the Portuguese soldiers. There are different stories inside, I mean, this wall art they represent different type of stories, different eras, different events that occurred. This is the first visit of Lord Buddha to Sri Lanka, to Mahayangana, to the Yakka people, a different type of people, a different caste of people, probably a group of people. So this hall actually shows different events that occurred with Lord Buddha's life and also Buddhism in Sri Lanka. Another fantastic place here at the Kalani Rajamaha Vihare is the Sivurgala Vihare. I told you that when King Maniakika invited Lord Buddha and his 500 Arahants, they came here first to Kalaniya and then they had a bath at the Kalani River or uh, if you call it the Kalyani River. So the place that the Lord Buddha himself and all his people, they took the bath, is now being remembered and made into a small viharaya called the Sivurugala Viharaya. Of course, what the meaning, Sivurugala, means that the place where Lord Buddha kept his robe, the Sivura or the cloth that the Buddhist monks wear is called the Sivura. So, the place where Lord Buddha kept his Sivura when he took the bath is the place uh, that we can see today as the Sivurugala Viharaya. So, let's have a look. I mean, it's one of the bit of unknown places here at Kalaniya, but I think this is one of the main highlights if you visit the Kalaniya Rajamaha Viharaya place. So this is the Sivurugala Vihara. It's a small, very small 
uh, temple made up recently but the place the exact location is very historical it runs back over 2000 years plus because the date which Lord Buddha came to Sri Lanka the third visit is supposed to be somewhere around in 528 BC so we are talking about over 2500 years even though the temple is a bit new the place is being um, worshipped for ages and the shrine is over here let's go have a look the place that we are going to visit now the Sivurugala Vihara okay first before going there I want to show you something really cool now these are called guard stones so whenever you visit any Sri Lankan ancient historical place a palace a temple you get to see a place like this a guard stone it could be some sort of a deity or guards and it's something that's related to the Sinhalese Buddhist culture mostly and this that you can see here is called the moonstone here at many of the ancient palaces here in Sri Lanka you get to see moonstones and on the first realm here you get to see the elephant the horse the lion and the cow so usually this could be depicted as it came from the Anuradhapura period because from the period Polonnaruwa period onwards the cow has been removed from the moonstones as the cows being venerated and celebrated in the Hindu culture but let's go have a look inside and as usual you should take off your slippers so this is the Sivurugala Viharaya you can see over here you get to see the beautiful Kalyana Nadi the Kalani River and this sacred slab of stone this area is being considered to be the place that Lord Buddha kept his robes while he was taking the bath in the river so that's why it's called the Sivurugala so basically this is literally the Sivurugala that is being honored and worshipped today and this exact location that we are here now is supposed to be the place that Lord Buddha had the bath from the river so this is another place that we can include into the list of places where we believe that Lord Buddha visited in Sri Lanka so overlooking the Kalini river this is the place that Lord Buddha had his bath and overlooking here we can see the river so we can assume that when Lord Buddha and his 500 Arhans came they first took a bath in the river even though now people don't use the river for the bath it could have been one of the primary sources of irrigation and water back in the day because we are talking about 2500 years I want to thank the Nayaka Thera of the Raja Mahavihareya, Reverend Kollupiti Mahinda Sangarakita Himi, for allowing us to do the video here. Because with his permission, we were able to record many of the locations inside the Kalaniya Raja Mahavihare. Even though you can definitely come and visit when you are in Colombo, when you are in Sri Lanka, some of the video permissions were not given to many. So, a special thanks to the High Priest the Nayaka Thera for allowing us this opportunity. I think that I was able to convince you to make a visit to Kalani Raja Mahavihare to see these places, to feel that atmosphere, the vibrance, the energy, the peacefulness of this amazing premise. So this is Mission Journeys from Kalani Raja Mahavihare. Hope you guys had a lovely time.